Warning, the following video has spoilers for the books below. If you haven't read them yet, just go do it. They're really good. Let's get on with the video. The point is, there isn't a human alive that can teach you how to fight as well as they do. He shook his head. The way you learn how to kill someone is to have them teach you. You learn how they fight, discover their strengths and weaknesses, uncover their secrets, and never let them see yours. You want to learn to kill Frey? You learn from them. From these simple words would grow the greatest human fighting organization in the history of Elan, the Teshlor Guild. In today's video, we're going to cover everything that we know about the Teshlor Knights, including what the seven disciplines of the Teshlor actually are. Let's get started. Tesh takes Wraith's words to heart and learns everything he can from the Galanteans. I have been watching them, going to the practices, seeing what they do. They have different fighting styles. Did you know that? Each of them is a master in a different skill. If I join the practice sessions, let them teach me, I could learn each of the different techniques. When the Galanteans start passing on their fighting knowledge to humans, it doesn't take long for Tesh to rise through the ranks and become the best. All the exercise and ample food had turned the one-time cadaverous whelp into a lean, muscular lad. Still lanky, still not as tall as he would likely one day be, Tesh was already well on his way toward his goal of mastering the disciplines of the Galanteans. This fact is heightened by Sebek when he gives Tesh his namesake nickname. After a few additional short-lived instructions and humiliation, Sebek became intrigued at the suicidal toddler who learned from his mistakes. When Tesh deflected an attack with a bare palm, Sebek stopped calling him stupid. He even stopped calling him kid. Tesh's new name was Teshlor, Swift Hand. From there, Tesh would go on to master all the styles of the Galanteans and form the Harwood Teklors. And though Tesh would die before the end of the series, his legacy and fighting knowledge would live on through the troops he trained. Those who fought in Tesh's legion were trained in all of the seven disciplines he'd adapted from the Galanteans. The process was considered ridiculous by many, too long, too demanding, and definitely too extreme. Most of his men failed to complete their full apprenticeship. Over the last five years, only Brigham Killian had achieved what Tesh considered competence in all the disciplines. But those that had at least some proficiency in each were admitted to his elite squadron, the Harwood Teklors. So this brings into question as to what the seven disciplines actually are. Well, we know that they are based off of Nephron's Galanteans, so we can bring in the Galantian list from last week's video. The discipline that we hear the most about in Sullivan's writings is the Tech Chin. This is the art learned by the Pickering family that makes them such formidable swordsmen. No one would dare challenge a Pickering. They have a legendary family tradition with swords. Rumor has it that Cedric learned the ancient art of Tech Chin from the last living member of the Knights of the Order of the Fallen. As a side note, the Order of the Fallen was an order of knights that preserved the disciplines of the Teshlor Knights after the fall of the Empire. This order could have started from some surviving Teshlor Knights, or perhaps it was begun by one of Jarek's, the Guardians, lineage. It is also not known whether the order had any direct connection to the theorem Eldership, though a connection could make sense. Going back to the Tech Chin, this obviously references the Galantian Tech Chin and its usage of a single, long, narrow blade. The discipline centers around complex footwork, anticipation, and strategy. In the Rhaeira books, Count Pickering uses a rapier, but Tech Chin seems to apply to any long, narrow blade, with or without edges. The only other discipline specifically mentioned in the books is the one based on Vorath. Hillman was asking when he could finish his training in the Vorath Discipline. We don't get much more information about the discipline here, but we have seen Vorath fight and know that he often used a three-spiked ball on a chain in one hand and a star-shaped mace in the other. This lines up with the discipline which mainly includes chains 
as well as other blunt weapons such as maces and hammers. Because of these weapons, the style heavily relies on the endurance of the practitioner. At this point, none of the other disciplines are mentioned in any of the books currently out. Luckily, we have our list of Galanteans as a starting point, and can fill in with knowledge that Sullivan has shared. From Ares, we get the Eresa. This revolves around pole weapons such as javelins, spears, and pole arms. Balance is core to the style. This discipline most likely is the one that encompassed the Ula Davar, which is the double-bladed quarterstaff used during the Uli Vermar duels. This would explain how Hadrian would have known how to use it, even without ever seeing one. Next, we have Medak, and the discipline of Medaka. Medaka focuses on short blades, such as knives and daggers, and relies heavily on speed. It is interesting to note that Medak actually died before Tesh began his training. In fact, Tesh never even met Medak, which means Tesh must have learned Medaka from the other Galanteans, which begs the question as to whether this would have been one of the weaker disciplines for Tesh and eventually the Tesh lore. It is also fun to hypothesize how Royce would be compared to Medak or someone trained in Medaka. The next Galantean on our list is Anatole, but he died long, long before Tesh was even born and therefore did not inspire a discipline. In fact, we don't even know what his weapon specialty was. Then we get to the infamous Sebek. It should be no surprise that the discipline of Sebeka focuses on dual short swords. This aggressive style includes disarming techniques as well as using bare hands to block blades. It relies on speed, anticipation, and confidence. This is most likely the style that Hadrian often uses when he dual wields his bastard sword and short sword. Then we have the Grenmorian Grigor. His discipline is the Gorian Gar, which focuses on the use of a large two-handed sword. It should be no surprise that this style's most important attribute is strength, and it appears that this may have been Hadrian's second most used style, as it is what he used when he wields his spadone. Finally, the last discipline is the Anwire, inspired by Anwir. This technique uses coils such as whips, ropes, slings, nets, and snares, and it relies on misdirection and confusion, as well as the patience of its practitioner. Together, these seven disciplines would later be known as the Tesh, and make up the core of a Teshler Knight's training. But while these are the only ones required to gain the full title of Teshler Knight, there were actually two additional schools of training that were initially seen as non-essential due to them focusing on defense and range, though this non-essential status would later change. Nicely enough, they actually line up with the last two Galantian characters we haven't yet mentioned. The first is the Primus, whose focus is on shields. This name most likely comes from the word Primus, which referred to the military commander of a large unit of men within a legion, most notably Tesh being the Primus of the Northern Legion. Though the school's name most likely is referencing Nephron himself, who generally used a sword and shield. The second school is the Rowan, which focuses on bows. Interestingly, the school was not named after Moya, the first master of the bow, but instead Roan, who was its inventor. Together, these two schools would form the Lore, calling back to that original Tech Lore nickname, combining to form the full Tesh Lore name. This ends most of what we know about the Tesh Lore disciplines and schools, but I did want to end the video with some fun facts about this topic. The first we have already hinted at, but the later word of Tesh Lore at first glance, seems to just be a slight spelling and pronunciation change over the thousands of years to the original word Teklor. But this is not correct. The later version of Teshlor actually comes directly from Tesh's name with the added L-O-R, representing the seven disciplines and two schools. So these two words, while related, are definitely two separate words. This can be confusing and even trips up Myron in Air of Navron. 
The Pickerines have made a name around knowing one of the Teschler disciplines, but there is another family that supposedly also has this knowledge. The Pickerines and the Kildares are each said to have discovered just a single one of the Teschler disciplines. These jealously guarded secrets have made those families renowned for their fighting skills. The Kildare family does not seem to be mentioned again in any other books, so we do not know if, like the Pickerings, they know the Tech Chin, or perhaps they know a completely different discipline. The Order of the Fallid, though spelled F-A-U-L-D, is pronounced Fallid, like F-A-L-L-E-D. This could be a reference to the Teschler Knight's betrayal and subsequent fall from grace. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Be sure to subscribe and watch my other videos to learn more about the world of Ilan and Rayera. Thanks!